your is one of the number one predictors of how much muscle you can put on. Hey, what's going on? Megan here. All right, what are the best predictors of how much muscle you can build? That's one of the most popular questions I get is, Megan, what is my genetic potential for building muscle? Keep in mind, this is for building muscle, nothing else. Last time we did a video looking at the anthropometric measures. You guys know what came out on top. This time, we're just going to look at 10 factors that are most commonly used to try to predict somebody's muscle building potential right and these are things that you can do at home this is not going to cost you any money no need to buy a genetic test none of that right things that you could do yourself we're going to use the standard tier list for this channel from i'm about to nut which is best of the best all the way down to pure garbage and the things we're going to look at are your appetite uh your beard genetics facial hair genetics your frame right muscle to bone ratio bone to muscle ratio your immune system your ability to get a pump that's yeah, going to shock a lot of people uh your race or ethnic group your athletic background you know how good you are at sports your ffmi your starting strength meaning what your strength levels were when you first started working out and obviously i'm gonna i'm gonna keep this one for last that is how much muscle you were able to put on uh, on a serious program during the first four to six months of training all right let's get started so once again if a person knew just one of these things how predictive it is of their muscle building potential uh your athletic status or your athletic background right that's an actually fucking amazing right so how good you were at sports you don't have to be a champion or a team leader but how good you were at sports before you started bodybuilding right that's a very good predictor of your, your muscle building potential a lot of people think that the two things are not related they are very correlated right if you were good and it doesn't matter what the sport is as long as it was obviously an explosive sport or a sport that requires physical exhaustion so it could be running it could be sprinting um it could even be endurance running right so running sprinting jumping uh soccer basketball doesn't matter uh if you were good at a sport as a teenager or as a kid chances are you're going to be very good at building muscle and obviously i can make a whole video explaining why but it's mainly because of genetic interplays and overlaps between explosiveness and muscle building that's why believe it or not look at the most genetically gifted bodybuilders or uh, just the average joe the guys were able to put on muscle fast sure enough you find out they were very good at some sport you know it could be could be any sport like i said as long as it's obviously as long as it's obviously a difficult sport now obviously if you didn't play sports as a kid or as a teenager that doesn't mean that uh you know you don't have good genetics for building muscle right because you were never exposed to that environment so just skip that one all right next your starting strength right well your strength level was uh the first time you started working out i want to put that okay believe it or not a lot of people think that this is higher it's not it's not a good predictor of your muscle building potential because many 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 factors influence your strength you watch my video on stronger it's not bigger i have so many rants about that but if you look at the literature you look at the anecdotes your strength is not a predictor of how jack you can get or how jack you even are obviously there's some correlations but it's very very low compared to the other factors right and again i don't want to go into details the video is going to be too long but your strength is influenced or can be influenced by things that have nothing to do with muscle growth right your body fat obviously that's going to affect your range of motion so you're going to think you're stronger when you're really not your baseline hormone levels your anatomy right your height your leverage is going to make you stronger or weaker at certain lifts based on your anatomy your tendon stiffness your uh your neural firing rate there are so many things that can make you stronger without uh having anything to do with muscle but anyway so if you start off lifting the reason why it's not lower is because don't get me wrong if, if you're strong from the beginning then that's obviously a sign that you'll be able to recruit your high threshold motor units which obviously can give you a boost in hypertrophy but again it's not a sole predictor it's not a good predictor all right next um your anatomy right to be specific your bone to muscle ratio fucking amazing right obviously on average people that have heavier bones and not just in terms of bone density but just total bone mass on average they typically can carry a lot more muscle just common sense i don't have to i don't even have to go into the science to explain that one right that's why we can look at neanderthals and just by just by looking at the bones we can tell that they carried so much muscle compared to humans right the bigger you are the bigger your frame the more muscle you can pack on top of that so that's a very good predictor not in i'm about to nut category but higher than okay next your facial hair genetics i want to put that out okay and i'm gonna explain why it's not lower or higher the reason why it's not lower is because again if you're really good at growing a beard really good at growing facial hair it's just a good sign of uh your sensitivity to androgens right so obviously you got to be sensitive to testosterone notice i say sensitivity right because you could have low testosterone levels and still have very very sensitive androgen receptors or you could have low testosterone levels that have many 
uh, more androgen receptors than the average person. In that case, you're going to be more sensitive to androgen. So it's not always about total testosterone. I say this every time, but if I don't mention that disclaimer, people are going to try to short me. But long story short, if you have really, really good beard genetics, official hair genetics, chances are you're going to be good at building muscle, mainly because the androgen receptor is number one, apart from myostatin, of course, when it comes to building muscle. And again, watch my video on that. Now, the reason it's not higher is because, again, you know, like, it's not the sole predictor, right? For example, maybe you just grow facial hair because you have a lot of, uh, you have some genetic polymorphisms that make it so your body overproduces 5-alpha reductase, right? So you just probably have higher DHT levels. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to more muscle mass, right? Many other things influence uh, your beard genetics other than just testosterone and the androgen receptor, right? So that's why it's not higher. Next, your race or your ethnicity. I'm going to put that bad. In fact, I was going to put that pure garbage. But I'm going to put that bad. A lot of you guys always skip the disclaimer every time I make a video about genetics and race and stuff like that. You cannot assume that you're going to be good or bad at building muscle just because you're black, white, or Asian. That's not how it works, guys. Right? When I say West Africans or, or, or Samoans or this and that are, are good at this or bad at this on average, and I always add that fucking word and you guys always skip it, it simply means the average or in some cases the frequency is higher. Right, so phenotype X Y Z might occur in a higher frequency in ethnicity A. That doesn't mean that everyone in that ethnic group is gonna have that phenotype, right? I have so many people asking me, "Hey, Megan, I'm I'm, I'm black. Does that mean I'm gonna build muscle fast?" Oh, Megan, I'm South Asian. Does that mean I'm gonna not build muscle? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, do you guys not watch the whole videos? You cannot predict your muscle building potential just by your race alone, because even within races, there's huge diversity and huge variations, right? Just because you're Samoan doesn't mean you're gonna be five foot ten. And the fucking tank, right? It just means that within that population, the frequency of that phenotype is higher, right? Two completely different statements. So stop trying to predict your muscle building. Again, I'm West African. You got some of my genetics. Trash. So stop thinking because you're from one ethnic group, boom, your fate is sealed. That's bullshit. And if you watch my entire videos, you should know that. But anyway, next, your ability to get a pump. Believe it or not, the ability to get a maximum pump fucking amazing and i made several videos about that guys you don't want to look at the research watch the videos you want to watch the videos look at the research this is not a theory this is not bro science this is facts your ability to get a maximum pump i'm not talking about just a oh look there's a little blood in my muscle i just did no that's not a pump that's that's a bitch pump right a maximum pump skin stretching pump that's what i'm referring to every time i said a pump guys the ability to get that which i've seen influenced by genes or i made videos explaining the circulatory pathways and things like that and uh, the, the enzymes and proteins that evolve that has a big impact it's a big predictor of how much muscle you can build long term and of course you guessed it some studies have confirmed that as well right it's responsible for as low as 20 percent to as high as 34 percent of the variance which in muscle building in hypertrophy that is huge 35 percent of the variance that is massive so you could take 10 people or a group of people put them in a gym have them work out for the first time and you can measure the pump you can literally measure the swelling and the muscle thickness after that workout and that is a huge predictor of how much muscle they can build so every time i tell you guys for the last 10 years that the pump is so crucial and that the bros had it right you thought i was full of shit but anyway don't get me started i don't make i don't want to make this video about the pump so that is a great predictor how much muscle you could build now keep in mind the reason it's not higher is because there are many reasons that that affect your ability to get a pump right for example if you're dehydrated you're not gonna get a good pump if you have a shitty ACE genetic profile, well, it's going to be hard to get a pump, all right? If your rise system is fucked up, if your uh, capillary system is fucked up, if you don't have enough complex carbs in your blood, many, many, many things influence the pump. So that's why it's not a, uh, it's not high on this list. Next, your starting FFMI. Watch the video on FFMI. Obviously, that's going to be very fucking high on this list. Fucking amazing that I'm about to not category, and I'm going to explain why. The reason it's not lower is because if you're starting FFMI, assuming you calculate it correctly, right? Don't underestimate your body fat like 99% of people do. It's a good predictor, right? Because if you first start working out for the first time ever, zero training, and your FFMI is fucking 22 or some shit, yeah, that, that, that's a good predictor how much muscle you could build. Right, because it's a good predictor how much muscle you currently have. And if you have an FMI of 22 or even, God forbid, 23, which I've never heard of, but let's say you have an FMI of 23, the first time you step into the gym, then, motherfucker, you have a myostatin deficiency or your mother fed you trained when you were a baby, right? Most people are going to be between 19 and 21. So if your starting FMI is very high, so 21, 22, assuming you got the body fat correct, then that's a good predictor. Because most people are able to add two to three points to their to that starting FFMI. Some people can add four, obviously. And obviously, with the aid of PEDs, you can go a lot higher. 
But keep in mind, just because you're starting FFMI is low, that does not mean you have bad genetics, right? Because remember, there are two types of genetic freaks. There are baseline genetic freaks, and there's obviously trainability genetic freaks, right? Baseline, that means they're just freaks from the beginning without any training. And then the trainability freaks, those are the people who look like shit in the beginning. They're slow, depending on what sport or whatever you're measuring. Uh, they're normal at baseline, but the moment they start training, they respond extremely fast. So those are the two types of genetic freaks, right? I, I'm, I'm going to make a whole video about that because people get it confused. They think, oh, well, this person looks like shit, so he must have shit genetics. No, he might have trainability genetics, right? Same thing with speed. There are people who, before you even teach them how to run, they run extremely fast, right? Really good sprinters from the beginning. There are others who are very slow in the beginning, but as you train them, they adapt so much faster and that's what this has to do with ffmi right you might be somebody with a low ffmi in the beginning but maybe you have trainability genetics where you're able to increase it tremendously or you might just be a freak that starts off with a high amount and therefore is able to add you know to go into the 25 26 range all right next your immune system is goaded i'm about to nut category one of the most underrated if not the most underrated aspect of training is the immune system and i mentioned that in several videos but I might have to make a dedicated video for the immune system. Guys, the first line of defense when it comes to recovery from the gym, recovery from training, recovery from anaerobic activity, you name it, is your immune system. If you have a shitty immune system, good luck to your genetic potential for bodybuilding. It is the first line of defense. Satellite cell activation, your macrophages, oh, everything revolves around your immune system. That's why most people that are extremely jacked have a very good immune system and it's not a correlation doesn't mean because it's no it is causation again i'm gonna make a dedicated video on this because jesus christ so many people do not understand the importance of the immune system when it comes to adaptation to training it's not optional it's mandatory not to mention that recovery is the most important part of training anyway so if you can't recover from a workout good luck on putting on gains right your weekly volume is going to be trash your weekly or your training frequency is going to be trash and obviously your ability to progressively overload is going to be trash Next, your appetite, I'm about to not category, I could go on and on about this, but your appetite is one of the number one predictors of how much muscle you can put on, regardless of everything else below this list, right? Guys, building muscle is such an expensive process as far as calories go. You need to have a good appetite. I have not met to this day a jack person that doesn't eat like a fucking whale. Right? And the funny thing is, they don't even know they have a big appetite. They think that's how the average person is. Wrong. Most people quit. Sometimes I have clients and I show them the macros that they have to eat to just put on muscle. I'm not talking about dirty bulking and getting fat. No, just put on muscle. And they can't. And it could be due to many things. Some people have genetic polymorphisms on their leptin receptors. Some on their ghrelin activity. But not everybody can eat the amount of food it takes to both fuel workouts and recover from workouts. And in fact, I'm one of them. The OG subscribers remember, oh, God, I had to take liquid meals. I had to drink Ensure, which is for cancer patients. It's literally like liquid sugar and fat. Man, it was so hard for me to go from 160 to even 170. Meanwhile, my jack friends, dude, they were eating like crazy. And they were complaining that, oh, my God, man, I can't believe I have to stop eating now because I already hate my macros. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, fuck, man, I'm still trying to finish breakfast, and it's fucking 5 p.m. Right, so if you if you don't have a good appetite, it's gonna be a long journey for you. You could take all the steroids in the world. You could take you could do all the training programs in the world. If you cannot get your calories in, your protein, your carbs, your healthy fats, and your micronutrients, of course, good luck. Good luck. In fact, most small people who say I'm a hard gainer, no, I, I look at their meal plan and they're eating like fucking birds. All right, but anyway, next, last but not least, the amount of progress you make in a gym as far as muscle growth goes. In the first four to six months of training is the single, right? Apart from your immune system and all that, is the single best predictor. People hate to hear that, but it's facts. You want to know how good your muscle building potential is? Train for four to six months. There you have it, right? Obviously, a good training program, good nutrition, because a lot of people either have shit nutrition and a good training program, which obviously is not going to lead you anywhere, or they have great nutrition, but a shit training program, right? So four to six months on a good program and good nutrition, I don't care what program it is, as long as it checks all the all the boxes, right? In four to six months, you will know if you are hyper responder to training, right? And sure enough, the studies are clear on this. In fact, in some studies, as early as eight weeks, as early as two months, you can see who the hyper responders are. But to be safe, 
I push it up to four to six months. Keep in mind, that's consistent training with a nice diet and a nice caloric surplus. That's all you need to know if you have elite genetics for building muscle, right? Which is why I hate that question so much when people just say, oh, do you think I have good muscle building genes? I'm like, bitch, train. Train for four to six months, you'll see. It's like people saying, do you think I have the genetics to be an elite sprinter, right? Practice sprinting for a few months and let's see how fast you make progress. Because at the end of the day, it's never one genetic factor that's responsible for 100% of the variance, right? It's always many genes working together. So just because you have a, a bad version of a certain polymorphism or you have a good version of a, of a, of a certain gene, that does not mean you're going to be a genetic freak or, you know, or have shit genetics, right? There's so many genes that are involved. And you will never fully know unless you train. In fact, you could even have the good genes for something, right? So let's say you have good genes for the IGF-1 receptor. But you might have a shitty androgen receptor, which negates everything. Because now you're good at translating genes, but you're bad at transcribing genes. Which is obviously step one in muscle growth. But anyway, when I go into the science, that's it, guys. These are the top predictors of how much muscle you can put on. Number one being, bitch, just train for four to six months on a good program with a good diet. And you'll see for yourself. Save your money. But anyway, guys, join the Reddit and see you in the comment section. Alright guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nicholas of the Lord. Or you could just buy the share at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.